June 2021 numbers are in. And that's what we're talking about, so. Hey, what do you say? Roll. I think we'll roll. So does she. <laughs> everyone welcome back to my channel I'm Angela O'Hare your favorite Las Vegas realtor and I have two special guests with me but we'll just introduce this one first yeah I'm the uh, normal regular special <laughs> guest I'm Rob Howe the rock star realtor I'm the realtor you're the rock star but we have a true rock star in the house oh this is Ruby Kins Ruby, Ruby. Ruby. she's a little she's <laughs> going crazy now but she's chill she's chill so you know oh gosh I have two other cats, and what is this lady? You think I'm a cat lady or what? Mm, but yeah. Miss Ruby was so sweet. Um, a good friend of mine that I've known for years had fostered these little kittens, and it was a kitten, it was a four babies, the rest were boys, and she was the only girl, and she was the only one that didn't get fostered. Wow. I'm like, or adopted. I'm like, you mm -hmm. know what? I gotta have her. You know, the other two boys, Mochi and Kai, or Autumns, this one's gonna be mine. Yeah, and those are, they're definitely boys. <laughs> they're jungle cats. Yes, they she's, are jungle cats. She's chill. She likes she's, to keep, she likes to keep up with them though. Um, yeah, she's learning from them. And mm. then, um, I also got a new tattoo, which oh. I'll have to show a picture. Uh, yeah, it looks last nice. Last week was my birthday. A week from today was my birthday. Yeah. Well, happy, happy birthday. And I'm old. Well, we won't talk about that. You don't look old, so that's the beauty of that. But other than that, I got a new fitness room, too. So I'll have to show you pictures oh. of my new exercise room. Um, I so, did yeah. not know that. Besides selling houses, I got to stay fit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's part of my life, too. As you know, the tennis, tennis. tennis summer league started, which is, uh, well, it's hot. Yes. It's hot, hot, hot in Vegas. And, uh, you know, thankfully our matches, I had my first one last night. They start at 630. And the good news is that it starts, it gets really blazing hot, but it's only going to get better as your match goes along. So that's the good news. <laughs> yeah. And we only have July. Really is the July and that, August. Yeah. But yeah. July is like, oh my God. Well, it, you never know in Vegas if True. July is going to be the hotter one or August is going to be the hotter one. I hope we get a break. Right. But, uh. So, yeah, I, uh, I've been doing that, and... Uh, and then you're getting caught up on the other things, right? Yeah. Get, well, I've been obviously very busy with work, but I am I'm performing for the first time in over two years, since 2019. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. Of course, it's not just that my clients are the rock stars. I play, I pretend I'm a rock star <laughs> sometimes, and uh, I do have an original music band, of course. It's a two-piece band. And uh, we're playing a show finally Yay. next Saturday, July 17th. Oh, that's right. That's right. And where's it at again? It's downtown at a place called Taverna Costera. It's on a rooftop deck, Ooh. which is really, really cool. So it'll be out. One of the things we wanted to make sure, because I know some people are still nervous uh, about going out, but it's limited capacity and it's outdoor. So it's really cool. It's nice. Really great. Nice. Nice. Well, that's enough about our lives. Yep. Today we're going to be talking about June 2020 when numbers, and you know, it's going to be a long one, folks. Sorry, you know, just <laughs> cop, cop a squat, sit down, exercise, do whatever. But yeah. we try to make it 30 minutes and under. It's just impossible. And there's a lot to talk about. So, yeah. and we happen to like talking. So yeah. And especially since we don't do our show anymore, we kind of you know have to catch up for a whole month's worth of talking. Yeah, and if you make it through, you know what to give us in the comments, right? Right. We'll tell you later what that is. Yeah. If you already know, well, you know what you're going to do when you get through the video. Oh, I'm sorry. I kicked the camera. <laughs> uh, you know what you're going to do when you get through the, uh, the video. video. Yeah, you know, and last month, these numbers are, you know, just when I thought of one thing, it's actually just the opposite. I didn't think that last month was as robust as it was. However, it was a it was a, a very phenomenal month last I, month. I had a great month personally, and that's why it's hard. You know, you can't be just inside your own box saying, right. "Well, this is what's happening." Uh, you have to realize sometimes you're going to ebb and flow differently than the market, or you know, right. 
I, I know there's been times where I, and not necessarily that you're not going to have anything going on when it's busy, but you're just, you know, it's going to be different. So, so we had 3,543 yeah. new listings that sold in the month of June, which is actually up 11.1% from May and up 43.8% from June 2020. So now you got to remember, June 2020, things were still kind of COVID-ish. Yeah. But by July, <laughs> we should kind of see some better numbers, yeah. not so um, skewed numbers. Well, it was not far from this point where we actually had met up and started talking about this and realizing that, hey, it's a seller's market. You know? Yeah. So around this time, it was definitely starting to become that. But it did. It takes time. This is what I tell people all the time. The real estate market takes a little while for things to happen for things to change yeah you know it's not like the stock market or bitcoin or something where it's just gonna <laughs> you know do this or do that and and, and, and i mean it's, it's a gradual the, effect the movement upward has been definitely Ooh. out of the norm hey and ruby she, ruby will agree so yeah they had said that sales were softening for the last two months yes we noticed a decline in sales however june proved us wrong and there was a, a major increase 11.1 percent is a pretty big increase yeah. in sales compared to last month mm -hmm. but the biggest increase or the steady increase that we keep on saying month over month over month over month is the median sales price and that went from 385,000 in may to 395,000 in june which is a 2.6% increase and then also a 21.6% increase from year over year. So that's 21% increase. Uh, it's just, it's, wow. Uh, wow is right. It, came, it seems like it's like the increments of 10,000. Yeah. You know? Well, that's, you know, these, the, I mean, you know it with your buyers when, it, I mean, they're having to go in very strong and it's, it's a chunky in that, in that range, you think about it. Uh, if something was listed at minimum, you had to offer ten thousand dollars over list price. True, very so, true. Very I true. mean, you know, you add it all up, and it's yeah, and it's very hard to find anything. We say this every video. Usually now, it used to be anything under three hundred, but now it's like more like anything under five and four hundred thousand. It's very hard to find. Yep. Well, Absolutely. it's hard to find anything in general. <laughs> if it's nice that you're looking for, if it's teed up and ready to go, moving ready. Yeah, hard, hard to find all across the board. Yeah, definitely. So then we go into the luxury market, and the luxury market did very well last month. They had 163 homes that sold that was over a million and above uh, compared to the month before, which was 145, a 18 home increase. Mm -hmm. However, the median price decreased. It went from 1.54 mil to 1.349 mil, which is 191,000 decrease in median price. However, the average price remained roughly the same from the prior month, okay. which was 1.9 and change. Okay. And, and you know, you got a lot of these new, newly minted million dollar homes that are coming on, right? Those homes weren't a million dollars not that long ago. Right, exactly. Those homes were in the eight, 900,000 range. Now they're into the I wouldn't even call those luxury homes, you know. Well, they fit the luxury, uh, right. you know, at least what we're calling luxury, right? Million and over. So uh, they're moving, they've moved into, but you're right, not long ago they were not considered that. And they were, some of these are track homes. Yeah. You know, a good chunk of them are track homes. Yeah. 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 So. <laughs> Another thing I wanted to bring up in the luxury market is last month we had a very high sale in the luxury market in McDonald Highlands. It went for, 25 million dollars with an asking price of 28 million it was on the market for only seven days it was on and by dragon ridge golf course um, on dragon peak road and this home was huge over 15,000 square feet um, a casita four bedrooms three dens a loft five car garage pool spa you name it this home had it yeah isn't that crazy except for a low price <laughs> I mean, three million, and you know, three, you know, that's probably how the medium price dropped in the luxury market because <laughs> You're of right. the, the, You're the right. sale of this one. Uh, maybe. But I always like to think about what that real estate agent's making, and they made three percent on the buying side. I don't know what the selling side is. Sometimes they usually offer lower, but the buying agent got a three percent commission off of twenty-five million, 
he she got seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars yep that's like uh that's like commercial agent status wow. right there you know commercial agents will make a couple of sales a I'd year i'd pay off my house my cars um maybe even buy a new house <laughs> yeah. i mean wow yeah, i would love a, to have that you'd be a, set uh, for a while a game changer for sure a life changer life changing money for sure uh, but you know, I, I would imagine that agent has earned their right to uh, be able to to, to do that. Um, either way, they they scored a client that, that had some pocket change, you yes. know, to go out and buy their uh, their home. I actually um, had a client interested in a 4.25 million dollar home in McDonald Highlands that I went and took took a tour last weekend and that was the first time I had ever been in there and it's kind of confusing McDonald Ranch, McDonald Highlands, Foothills, Foothills at McDonald Highlands but I guess it's all really basically one area mm -hmm. and the views over there I mean against that black mountain Killer. it is yeah. OMG so I, of course since I had to show a home I got some good video footage to make a video for the future since awesome. I was kind of officially in there yeah. <laughs> so stay tuned in the near future I will be making a video on McDonald Highlands McDonald Ranch Dragon Peak Golf Course um, yeah. so stay tuned for my video on McDonald's <laughs> I'm gonna feature the egg McMuffin that <laughs> I'll I feature no Ruby longer Kim's. eat. Actually, <laughs> my Ruby Tuesday. Goodbye, <laughs> Ruby Tuesday. All right. Okay. All right. Seriously, though. All folks. right. So yeah. So the luxury market <laughs> is still on fire, um, and they're selling fast. Seven days at 25 million. That's like yeah, phenomenal. Yeah. And it was must have had the most beautiful views. Seven days for 750. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like it. Yeah. If you want to buy a luxury home, you know who to call, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just kidding. So let's hey, get back to the numbers. We're getting those calls, though. Yeah, we are getting you those are calls. You are calling us. Yeah, you are calling us. Yes, we just need to make <laughs> it happen. <laughs> So we actually had an increase in listings. There were 3,860 new listings for the month of June, which is up 3.5% from May, and also up 19% from the prior year, which is good. We needed those listings. And I think usually when more listings are up, that's why the sales were up, because we had a little more selection to choose yeah. from. Yeah. However, the uh, amount of homes that didn't sell without any offers was 2,454, which is actually um, up 20.8% from the prior month, and then, but down 51.7% from the prior year. So what that means is, you know, a couple months ago, we were looking at what the 16 to 1800 number of mm -hmm. listings on the market. Now the number of listings are staying on the market a little longer, depending on the location and the condition of the home price and price yes there, there there are some wishful thinkers out there yes if you will yeah so but then you know the months of supply is still hovering at 0.7 months of supply so i had noticed because i've been showing a lot of clients that it was softening in my opinion i thought the market was softening um i've gotten quite a few deals where we um, asked below asking price and won, but of course, obviously that was priced too high to begin with. There you go. But buyers think they're still getting a good deal because they got it below the asking price. That's true. And now I'm seeing homes, especially where I've been showing, staying on the market just a little longer than, yeah. than normal. And if it's not mm -hmm. sold in two weeks, then that means, in my opinion, it's overpriced. Bottom line, this, the houses that are good to go and beautiful and, and moving ready are selling boom. They're in, in no, no slower than any before. They're, they're, they're selling very quickly. Uh, but anything that's kind of eh, junky, eh, overpriced for what it is, especially way overpriced. Some of these houses, it's almost like, well, if you give me my number, I'll move. Right. <laughs> Which is like a lot of, yeah, that's what you're seeing. So this is this is a softening in the market. It's it's very underground in the roots right Sub now. Subtle. Yeah, it's like as if you know the poison is just hitting the big not poison. Maybe I shouldn't call it poison, <laughs> but but uh, you know it's like I'm relating it to a plant that has something in the soil down there. It takes a little while for it to do anything to the top of the plant, so it's just barely tapping the root right now. And uh, I do think, especially because of this next number. 8.8 percent it's we have 8.8 percent .8 more inventory is that what we're looking at yeah on the market with that offers we had how much last month it was 0.5 percent 
It was, was the oh, first last month that oh, last month it was at point six or seven still a uh, months on the, the market. No, I'm talking about point the actual amount oh, of yes, inventory yes, yes. increase. We yes. had a point five percent increase. Right. It's now up eight point eight percent. Right. It's what we thought would happen because we saw that peaking of the clouds. Right. And this isn't because the market is softening enough for you to go in there and be able to you know uh, not 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 pay. <laughs> Uh, you know, above or have appraisal contingencies waived and, and have, you know, have to be strong. That doesn't mean it's not that at all right now. Right. But it does mean that, that the, the sun is coming out some more, so to speak. There is more uh, availability for homes. They're, they're yes. overpriced, a lot of them. Maybe some of them are a little junky. Silver um, lining. Um, yeah, because the offers I've been putting in, we haven't waived any of those contingencies because there wasn't any other offers and it had been on the market 12 days, 30 days, two months. I'm like, and it was actually not a bad property. Yeah. I think it was because it was overpriced to be. Yeah, if they're, if they're really overpriced yet, yeah, it's still, price is still, look, I, and this is a bad mistake. We talked about it, I think last month, in my opinion, on seller's parts, let the market do the talking to you because you, it will right now. It will absolutely right. tell you what your properties were. Now there are some properties, especially in the luxury market, you just gotta come up with your number and you're not gonna get like multiple offers necessarily. But in the general, like what we were talking about, that 500, 700,000, even all the way up to a million, you, you're gonna get potentially multiple offers and you wanna let those offers do the talking. You know? And yeah, and, but you have to be more realistic, you know, just because I've seen or heard that people are listing their homes based off of what they feel the future sales are going to be, right. not with what's going on right now. You got to let the, and that's why I'm saying, it. And, and when it comes down to your appraisal, it's very important because even if if somebody, you, you, you know, if you don't get an appraisal waiver or contingency waiver, or if you don't get money on top of that, or if your money isn't covering the full gap of whatever they offered that they're, you know, putting that money over appraisal money right um then you still the appraisal still matters and the appraiser you want to be able to tell them i didn't just make up a number i i put my number here and the buyers came in here right boy that makes the appraiser's job and a that's lot why as a seller you know not to be overzealous but to price it accordingly you know yeah. um that way if you price it at or below market value, then you're gonna get those multiple offers and then you're gonna be able to get what you really wanted to right. begin with. But when you list it high, then it's gonna be harder to sell because then people think it's, they're not gonna be fighting for it. Yeah, do you want the buyer deciding that you, they can give you more for your property or do you want the buyer deciding they're gonna give you less for your property? Right. That's the difference here. Exactly, because so once you it's been on the market for two weeks. Yeah. You overprice, you're gonna get the buyer saying, I decide I'm going to give you less. Yeah, and you get less uh, bonuses, you know. You're, you're paying costs. You're, you know, who knows? But you're certain. You, I just, it's pretty one and one equals two. But mm -hmm. I understand, and I'm willing to work with people that want to do that. But I don't think it's the best avenue, and right. it usually pans out like almost always that it's not. You could have made more. So there you go. Wow, we got the numbers down in 19 minutes. Yeah, what but are we, we still on to? got some important information that there I felt go. that we needed to discuss. Hold on. Un momento. Un momento. Pausing. Pausing. <laughs> Ruby. Ruby's being so good. She's over here just chilling. Oh, and, uh, then, and then you got you know that must Ozzie be Oswald, though. Yeah, Ozzy. Oh. The next topics we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about rental, eviction moratorium, and new construction. We okay. thought that these were important topics to go over. Of Actually, I'm going to go over some new construction numbers, too, um, okay. that the new builders research whatever posted. Um, <laughs> whatever it, <laughs> whatever you'll, it is. You'll put a link. I'll put a link in the description below. <laughs> but, obviously, the CDC extended the eviction moratorium for another month ending at the end of July. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to end in June, now it's July, and they say one more time, one yeah, more well, time. The, you mean the one that the, uh, the, the, the the courts already said isn't really even uh, enforceable? Right. <laughs> but yet everybody's going, well, we don't want to test that. Yeah, that And one. in May, you know, ours supposedly ended in May, but a lot of people, um, they're not, they're, they couldn't because the courts wouldn't look at them because yeah, of the, the CDC. CDC. 
So you, we got some interesting clogs in the drain here. So Yeah. You know, I, I understand that we went through a hardship last mm -hmm. year, but there's always two sides to every story. And not just the tenants that had the hardship, but the landlords had the hardship. And, you know, it, it's not fair to them either to be stuck not having to pay. They can't pay their mortgage because the tenants have been extended but then what about their their forbearance if those landlords went into forbearance and they were financing those rental properties so it's like a it's, it's a vicious cycle yes it is and it created a lot of problems in the rental market for legitimate people looking for rentals because what happened is that a lot of these landlords are saying you know what I'm not I want higher qualifications I want to know that somebody isn't going to use the eviction moratorium right. against me once they move in they've been working steadily for a year you yeah know? they want to see higher and higher qualifications which basically means they're asking for qualifications that would that would allow you to buy a property <laughs> right <laughs> I want money in the bank I want 700 credit yeah. scores I want to see yeah. everything you know it's yeah. like well uh, geez, you're really excluding what usually typically is a, as just a fine and dandy, uh, you know, rental um, uh, inventory or pe a number of people that might be able to rent. So uh, it's kind of weird, right? Yeah. So what what that's happening is that the rental prices here in Las Vegas has accelerated Oof. tremendously, uh, and it shot up to 17.3 percent year over year from last May. I'm surprised it's not more than that. Yeah, 17.3 percent. Um, and the Valley's recent growth last month actually tied Riverside, California. Wow. Yeah. For the highest, second for highest, highest among rent. 50 metro areas with Phoenix wow. at the top. That's, honestly, this is a problem. It's too much. It's yes. too high. It's going to have some effects uh, for a while. It's really interesting to see what, what happens. These are good intentions that have led to bad things and I just think they've held on to these moratoriums a little bit too long. You know in California, do you know this? In California they extended the, theirs, their uh, uh, local or their state moratorium till September Oh, and they're paying landlords, they're paying that landlords their back rent. Oh, well that's good. The state good. of California has agreed to do that. Wow. I mean it's good but it's like where's this money coming from? It's so with that said, um, Moratorium is going to really end, you know, they kept on saying till end of ju June, but if you have been talking to your landlord, then landlord, your lender, your mortgage provider, then sometimes you've been able to extend it. I didn't really for research that yeah. for the forbearance, mm -hmm. but this is what this moratorium and the forbearance is what caused the real estate market to be crazy across the country. Mm -hmm. It's because of... Um, one, where are the sellers going to go if the rents are so high and they can't find a place with limited inventory in the rental market? Yeah. And then the prices, I have a, a friend that rents an apartment, two bedroom, rinky dinky apartment for like sixteen fifty a month mm -hmm. for an apartment yep. in Vegas. Yeah. My mortgage is seventeen hundred dollars for a thirty three hundred square foot house. That's just crazy. I mean, it's supply and demand. There yeah. is not enough supply, and for a multitude of reasons, part of it is certainly the eviction moratorium, and in part of it is Vegas is just a place where people are locking down and staying, you know, put. Yeah. That you know, when you don't really have a lot of options, uh, or if your option is just fine to stay here, then, or if you if you already came here and you're you're that's why you came, you're you're settled in for a while, right? So number of different factors there, but. It has caused, I can't even create words, for, I need to create a word for this, it's bananas, <laughs> insanity, just bonkers, the rental market is just... And I get calls you know. all the time and unfortunately uh, we, oh, we, yeah. can't, we can't do... I, I did help a good friend get a place. Oh wow, They just, That's they just nice. got it today. V very, uh, listen, this, this is something... The I, rentals are getting multiple offers. I, it's something I, I can't really do much of because I, I feel inept. I feel yeah. unable to help. And certainly, uh, even before, it was always kind of like, you, you don't make your living, unfortunately, in Las Vegas. Uh, that what they're, what they're going to give an agent as a finder's fee is not going to be very good. So you can't really make your living. But, of course, we want to help people, but you can't even do that right now. There's hardly any way to help. So in this case, it's like, well, here's here's what you have to do to apply. Go apply. <laughs> I, I hope you like it. In this rare, rare case, I was actually in the area. I opened the property and, and oh, did a little nice. did a little zoom with them. Right. And they happened to be able to get it. But um, 
Anyway, just yeah, tough. they're very strict. The the strict uh, when it comes to the renters, just because of the whole like we said, the eviction yeah. moratorium. So now we're going to go into new construction, and um, I had been seeing in the RJ for the last couple of weeks how the RJ was por- reporting that new construction sales were down for the last two months. But in reality, the only reason they had been down for the last two months is because they don't have the construction, the, you know, the lumber supply shortage was really... Sh- they can't build them fast they enough. They can't build them fast they enough. They couldn't get the know. lumber. The lumber prices went up. Uh, it's, I mean, like a My lot. My clients had delays and they bought back in January and March and they had delays where now they're finally in the framing stage when this typically is a six to eight month build is now taking maybe nine to 12 months yeah. to build. Um, so the reason I feel that they were down in sales is because they they only limit what they, they can sell. Yeah, they, they're, they're just not able to build them fast enough. But the median price in May for the um, new construction was 402990 which is an all-time high ever in new construction median price. So then, so if new construction is 402990 resales 395 where what's cheaper right behind it yeah yeah but resales actually catching up to new home construction the only difference in new home construction is your property taxes are going to be a lot higher <clears throat> yeah and i don't know if they're you know are they including are they including all new home sales in that well it says the it's is from it, the builder um, home family? builders research builder reported that 1000 85 net sales newly signed purchases contracts minus cancellations in southern nevada in may the second consecutive month-to-month drop and the lowest tally this year, according to the Las Vegas housing tracker, yeah. Andrew Smith. Is that including like a townhouse, a condo? They didn't specify, or, you know. just new construction probably as a whole. So yeah, I'm wondering, anyway. Uh, yeah, because you, there's not really that many new construction, well, there's a bit of townhomes and condos. You can hardly find a new construction home for four hundred two thousand. That's 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 where I'm like, wow, that seems yeah. low. <laughs> yeah, true, true. <laughs> Um, d- definitely, you can find some in the base price in the 300s, but it would be in the Southwest or North Las Vegas, mm. but not. Clearly, they're moving numbers in those yeah. areas. Um, well, I'll, and actually, you know, you can buy a new construction townhome in Summerlin, KB Ascent for this price, but I don't know if this is off of the base price that they're considering it or if it was with a lot premiums. They didn't specify all the Well, specifics. that's there. Okay, this is important stuff to know because, yes, it looks like they're they're comparable, but you got. Uh, pre, uh, lot premiums, you got upgrades, you got things that are not in the b- base, base sales price. price. So Exactly. Um, yeah. And yeah, I don't know how they, there's a couple of little things in there, right? Little details. Yeah. So then it says, despite um, the recent pullback, home builder sales this year far exceed 2020 levels and builders reported 6,413 net sales this year through May, which is up 60% stretch from last year the same stretch last year i mean obviously of course the oh, same they stretch pulled, last year they was pulled different. the plug on on building for a while yeah you know? exactly i mean it, I, I they were allowing construction to go on i mean they were allowing casino Fewers, construction yep. mm-hmm. they were allowing i mean uh, yeah building but um they definitely were backing off they were worried they were worried about how how many you know the, the one thing that the home builders hate is too much inventory so if they end up building a house and then it sits there and they call it standing inventory, right. boy, you haven't heard that for a little while, right? <laughs> yeah. Standing inventory? Yeah. Rarely do I we have that. I miss standing inventory. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so <clears throat> they just they just kind of pulled back on that. Yeah. Yeah. And you know. 30 know. minutes. 30 minutes. Not bad. I thought it was going to be a lot longer. <laughs> There's still a lot of new construction coming on. I just recently did a video of coming soon new construction and I did another one a month back and some of those still weren't even um, built yet and a a lot of times what these builders are doing now is they're releasing the community before the the model homes are even completed so if you're interested in buying like um, I had clients that wanted to buy or are buying in Castellana which is a very brand new um, community in the Red Point Village by Taylor Morrison they got right I mean the first two lot releases I was on it and they got it I lost my train of thought. Why was I talking about that? I don't know. Oh, oh, 
Sorry, they they got the the first lot, but they didn't even see the model homes. The model homes aren't even. They up. never saw the floor plan. They never saw the floor plan. Same thing with Acadia Ridge by Toll Brothers over there. They just finally opened up the model homes, right. but they've been selling they've since already, April. Yep. yep. Um, so just realize people that people were walking the frame. Yeah. They were walking the frame. I re I was one of the people. I brought a client out there, and we just walked the frame up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so be expected. If you're buying new construction and they don't have the models, you may have to just buy pretty much sight unseen without really going inside that floor plan. You know it'll be new. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, you know. Yeah. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Yes. And you builders. You're going to remember cutting us out on some oh, of your deals. Oh, boy. I got to tell you, there's some Lenar. real short sighted <laughs> Lenar. Lenar. Real short sighted thinking. I know that most of the uh, our people out there buying homes don't care that realtors are getting cut out. But, boy, it's short sighted. So, and I short sighted thinking. And I actually think that a business that wants to do that is probably not a business that most people want to purchase from but right now it's probably the last thing on people's mind i'm um, very disappointed with lennar because they're a good builder they're everything included package they don't do as much everything included though true you notice and that? Um, <laughs> they're not just they're not just ripping yeah, us off they're yeah. ripping you off yeah <laughs> i had about 10 sales this year in lennar and then all of a sudden they just like i'm like well i'm not going to be recommending my clients to lennar so. they don't want it this is this is the proverbial hit the break they they can't they can they don't even have stuff to sell so they're like well, they've just... actually gone into like an open door format where you yeah. can get the key code and look at the model homes that they even got rid of the sales agents at the office yep yep so how customer service oriented is Lennar really if they don't even have the sales people at the office anymore well they just think they're being uh, cutting edge is what it is and you know yeah. using technology I, I do think that people enjoy the idea that I, they can just walk up do the thing and get in true that is not but Boy, there's a no, it's just a number of things that add up to tell me that uh, they're, they're probably looking at the bottom line too much. And if I'm a buyer, I may not recognize it from the realist, realtor standpoint. Right. That, but I would definitely be wor worried about those red flags of a company trying to cut too many corners, especially right now when you've got the hottest, strongest market well, then they feel that. But, you know, when you're a buyer and you have no one really to talk to, how's yeah. that transaction going to happen? You know, I mean, you're going to be trying to get a hold of someone. It may yeah. not be very easy transaction to try to buy a house from Lennar because there is nobody there to talk to. There's no one to ask questions yeah. about the items. Yeah. yeah. And I try to get a hold of a lot of the online salespeople. And they rarely sometimes return your phone call. They'll email you a few days later. Yeah. And that's where I tell them, hey, I hope you keep your job. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Seems like your company doesn't care Anyways, about Anyways, that's enough. We are actually shorter than last month on our minutes yeah. for the market update. If you'd like to download the full report provided by the Las Vegas Realtors, I provided a link down in the description below. As always, if you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button um, leave a comment down below share with a friend and smash, smash that subscribe button thank you so much for watching rock on and do it peacefully and we'll, we'll see, see you on, on the, the next, next one, one. yeah